Hi everyone, I'm Starbright and welcome to Maud. And welcome back to the iconic, the legendary Beauty and a Bee. The series on my channel where I do my makeup on Pokemon music inspired by icon legend queen, Kenny J. D. Oh my god, I'm so excited to be doing this again. I think the last time I did it was like a month. So it's so good to be back. And today, by the title, we are doing album commentary on three different albums. Yes. We've got Mabel's about last night, Lizzo's special, and Sabrina Carpenter's emails I can't send. And I am so excited to be talking all about them. I've been literally listening to them like literally the past week, and I have my opinions, my thoughts. We're gonna be in depth, and I'm so excited. Before we start, what do we need to give? You know the answer. That's right, disclaimers! <laughs> One, I'm gonna be a little bit more critical than the average listener. Of course, I did like every album because I've listened to them like about, I wanna say at least three times. So obviously I really, really do enjoy them and I do really like them all. And I also love them all as artists. I think they're all incredibly talented, but I will be a little bit more critical. But these are all my opinions. Please respect them like usual. And tell me your opinions down below because I'd love to know. That's literally the main disclaimer of this video. And of course, you know what to do, subscribe to me. <laughs> you love albums? commentary please do because we're also gonna do this for Beyonce's album Renaissance oh my god I can't wait for that one because that one I feel like we're gonna go real real in and without further ado let us begin with the album commentary ah! okay we're zooming in because we're actually starting with eyes first by the way I also do loads of makeup on my Instagram account so please follow styleboy 1.0 but we are doing a look inspired by Samantha Harvey <laughs> Let's start off with the albums now. And I'm actually gonna do it in order of listening. So I actually first listened to Mabel's about last night. Now, if you don't know who Mabel is, you probably do because you've probably heard the song, Don't Call Me Up, I'm going out tonight, feeling good, now you're out of my life. Or you've seen the TikTok meme that's become a thing. This week, a hot new bombshell enters the villa. Don't call me up. I'm going out tonight, feeling good. I was kind of excited because I did like her first album. I wasn't obsessed with it. And I think with hers, I expected to like it the least, to be honest. So I was like, okay, this is why we're going to listen to it first. But actually, it's an unexpected fave. Oh my god, it was so good. And I actually really liked the first half of this album a lot because it's just giving me the summer energy I need to. It, does it also sound like every song should belong on the Love Island soundtrack at some point? Yes. Who's watching it this year, by the way? Because I'm not. The best season was with Mora. Icon, legend. I just really, really enjoyed it and I wasn't expecting to. And we start off with Animal, which is a living icon. Oh my god, I was like dancing my ass off to it when I first listened to it and honestly, I it's kind of one of my favorites. I'll get into like my top three and bottom three, but like it's just such a good song and I can't stop listening to it. Now, I have this thing. I love the idea of like Manny and Nelly Furtado. I love the lyrics of it. You know when she's like so powerful that like no one can stop her? Like that. It's the same with Carrie Underwood's um, Poor Everyone Else, which I'm obsessed with. So when this song had the same kind of lyrical content, I fell in love. I was obsessed. Of course I would be. My gay little ass was like, women in power. Hell yeah! <laughs> Honestly, like, it's still one of my favorites. And I'm actually inspired to do like a Halloween-esque video to it. And I feel like if a song inspires me in that way, then I'm gonna fall in love with it a thousand percent. The first three songs I loved, and I did feel like shy when I first listened to it. It felt like very first album, Mabel. Like, I feel like it could go straight after like Boyfriend or like Don't Call Me Up kind of energy like the production. So my prediction is that she did work with the same producer who worked with her first album. And I do still feel like, especially with Definition, which is another banger, she must have. And I also love how violins were kind of incorporated into like everything. Of course, that's because it's like kind of inspired by disco. Um, you can definitely hear like a disco house kind of inspiration kind of running through it, but in a way that felt very modern and it felt kind of as if she was taking more, again, like taking inspiration. You 
you can definitely hear in the second half a lot more of an 80s synth poppy kind of thing which of course you know I'm obsessed with that. Personally for me I feel like she kind of works 80s synth a little bit more better than like disco pop. There's only one disco pop song on the album the rest is more 80s synth and house inspired. She kind of understands her vibe and her vision which I love. I feel like this is more of an extension of her discography. That's why I think listening to it it didn't feel weird. It didn't feel odd at all because sometimes you know when you listen to someone who's trying to experiment or try a different sound and it just doesn't sound like them. No, Mabel definitely had that this is me, I'm just expanding and I really really like that because um, I think initially when we saw like the vision and the where she was going, I was kind of worried in case it was just going to be like a, oh we're trying to do future nostalgia part two, but I kind of like that she did go more of the house kind of scene and then kind of went with more 80s synth for the second part, which we haven't gone through the second part yet, but I love it. The second part is also amazing. I also do like that this album is split into twos because the interludes kind of separate it and it kind of almost has a little bit of a story involved. Not as much as like other albums of course but like I think there is a story of kind of like you start off as like what you think the night out will be or what, what it actually is and the second half is like why are you on it or the downside of it like midnight comes or like it's like four o'clock in the morning and now you're just kind of dealing with the consequences of everything and I feel like that's just so cool to have and it shows depth and I especially love when the party's over like that song is beautiful and it's such an incredible production wise we haven't heard something like that for maybe one a bit I do think it is one of those albums I just adore and I didn't expect to love it so much also I have actually been playing this album the most yeah out of all the albums this has been the most replayable to me like I've wanted to re-listen to this album over and over and over again. I've actually worked out to this album and I just think there's a lot of clever decisions that her and the producers and the lyricists and everyone made and honestly I'm just living for it. I really am. However, the collabs Ooh. None of them were like groundbreaking. Let Love Go should have been a solo. His bit kind of annoys me because <laughs> he's like talking about like what well, if you leave I'm just gonna throw a strap and I was like well, I guess that's the point of leaving, because if she even threatens to, you're just gonna be a baby. I will say Overthinking is probably the best collab of the album. I just kind of misunderestimated it personally. I was like, at first, I was like, oh, this song is not that great. And now I'm like, mm, stop. It's good. And Good Luck is just not my vibe. It never was my vibe. I never liked super heavy dance music. It's just not my kind of vibe and it never was. I've really just never been into like songs like that. That is like the one pure skip I have from this album. Cause it's just simply not my vibe. It also just sounds like I should be going to the club and I should be hearing the instance. But I see though, apart from that, oh my God, it looks so cute. I really, really do like this album. A lot, actually. Again, an unexpected fave. Truly. My rating for this album is a solid 8 out of 10. We're starting off strong, people. I think y'all should listen to it. And this is saying a lot because you know I'm not like a dance pop person. Like a pure dance pop. And if I'm saying the first half, which is mainly dance pop energy, is a lot like I love and I prefer versus the second half, which is 80 synth. That's saying a lot, okay? So I would 100% recommend it. Please go and listen. Top three from this album. Number one, Animal. I'm just, I'm forever obsessed with it. Number two is actually Shy. Ooh, I really, really love Shy. And number three, basically there's three mainly for my last one that are in the running to being top three. Number one is I Love Your Girl, which was initially in my top three and I just loved it so much. The second one, which was also initially in my top three, but that's because I just fell in love with the song instantly and let them know. And then the third one in the running is Definition, which is my friend Jordan's favorite, who's the one who did the intro music. That was his favorite from the album. That's like top three in the mix, I would say. <gasps> Bitch, this is so cool. Look at that. Bitch, this should be in Euphoria. Bottom three. One is Good Luck because it's the only skip from this album and honestly, I don't care. I think it's just all the collabs on my bottom three. Honestly, Overthinking is the one that enjoy it the most. 
It's my review of Mabel's album. I think this is as good as it is. So I'm actually gonna do the other eye and other brow off camera. We'll be back with the next part. I did both eyes off camera. I'm kind of obsessed. The Chi girls would be very proud. <laughs> we can start doing the bass and we can talk about the next album. So the next album we are talking about is Lizzo's special, which actually this one was probably the most, like this is gonna be the safest. I know I'm gonna like this one. And I was kind of right, this is the safest album out of all three. And I will say this album is still fine. I actually just listened to it while um, doing the other eye. Like special is that kind of bit. And I think special just has so much meaning to it. Especially if you are feeling alone and you're just feeling isolated. It's just that song to reassure you are special in every single way. I really like special personally because I feel like this song is so unique because it's saying like I've been through it and I know how it feels to be alone. So let me come for you and say you are not alone. My heart has never been so full. Especially the lyric, I'm so glad that you're still with us. I know that doesn't mean a lot for some people, but like I know for some other people, it is going to mean the world because it's just validating to hear and reassuring and lyrically it's such a fucking good song. Yeah, I just adore it and I think it's just so well done. However, also within the terms of safeness, this is the safest album out of all three. As in like, not just like, oh, a consumer listening to it is going to feel like I can listen to this and I know it's gonna be a good time. It's also safest as in like, this album is the sonically safest and to me, maybe even lyrically safest. I mean, there is some development, but there's a lot of the same energy as in her previous album, which honestly, Cause I Love You is such an iconic album. And if you've not listened to Cause I Love You, please go and do so because uh, you will not regret it. It's such an amazing album. And one reason why I think I loved it so much was because of how experimental she was in every single sense, especially production wise. Granted, I don't think every album an artist has to make has to be super experimental, but a lot of it did sound very similar. Now, granted, I'm a disco hoe. I love me some disco pop and some 80s, um, and you'll definitely see that through my favorites, but I think there's also like another song where they just blend into each other and it's like, oh my God, it's the same song. In that sense, I was like, especially coming from her last album, which was amazing. Not that this album wasn't amazing, but it just, it did feel very safe. And especially lyrically, there was mainly like a couple of themes that we kind of stuck to. Also, I feel like if I'm talking about this album, I kind of have to talk about the whole ableist slur thingy with it, which I'm so glad that Lizzo actually listened to the disabled community and changed the lyric of the song. This is why we stand Lizzo in this household because she actually listens to people. However, as much as that's happened, I still don't like girls. <laughs> I didn't even like it when I first listened to it. I was like, ooh. And I did kind of notice a couple of the songs throughout the album didn't wow me. I wrote this down on my phone and I kind of wrote down for Lizzo. I was like, the songs that are good in this album, I adore, but the songs I didn't like were just meh. And I wrote that I loved six songs, liked one, felt meh about one, and four I didn't like. And I'll get into each of them. So the one that I liked was, I love you a bit. So we love being vulnerable and we love that vulnerability. And I feel like it's so nice to hear Lizzo be vulnerable and have that kind of like space to be vulnerable on her album because we love vulnerability and I think it's so nice just to hear. Of course I adore that. The song I felt very mad about though was Break Up Twice which of course I knew that was Lauren Hill sampling. Boy you know you better watch out dun, dun, dun. Also fun fact did you know Mark Ronson produced that song? Maybe this is just me lyrically but like I got quite confused and maybe this is just me because I've A never been in love, B never been in a relationship. Comment down below if you can explain what Break Up Twice means for thee. But to me, I didn't really like it lyrically because like a toxic relationship, a little bit. You've been a dick to me. Like you've made me cry in the car. My friends are giving you side eyes. I feel like friends and family always know, you know? So I guess in that sense, it's like if they know, then you should trust that. So it just feels slightly weird not totally listening and kind of just going like, wow, but this is us being messy. <laughs> And it just felt like a kind of stubborn song being like, well, I don't want to break up with you twice, so we're going to have to work through this. Let me change that. There was another song that was like a like, which was, um, if you love me, then you love all of me. It just wasn't a wow song, but it was a good song. The three I didn't like though, which are my bottom three, haha. -ha. Girls can go in a hole. <laughs> That's like the one skip of this album. Coldplay. 
I didn't fall in love with it. It just felt very like stagnant production wise. I didn't feel like we really built. And then she repeats the same lyric like seven times and I'm just there like, girl. It just felt overly repetitive. I just didn't really love the production. I guess there was a Coldplay sampling, really high pitched. I recognize that. I just didn't like the song. And then the last one I didn't like was the sign. Slow build up and when it finally built up it was like at the end of the song and I was like, oh, I wasn't really into it. I will say the songs I loved, I adored and they are such standouts. One thousand percent. Like I definitely think Lizzo knows how to write a bop and can do it so well. I could listen to all the bops all day, all day. Everybody's gay. Disco pop at its peak. I love it so much. And it was made for the gays. Like this sounds like a song that would be playing at Pride in like a club. I could so picture it in like the night and everyone's just dancing to it, just having the time of their lives. I love it. And honestly, it makes me feel like the baddest bitch on earth. I think that is actually part of my top three. To be loved. A hella relatable song. Girl, you don't have to attack me like that. I really, really love that song so much. About Damn Time, of course. We all know we like that song. Or however, I do think after listening to it at your internship about 15 billion times and hearing it on like Instagram Reels for another 15 billion times, I'm kind of fed up with the in a minute I need to send my old man or my woman to plumb me up. But it's still a bob. I was still happy to listen to it at the gym. Special. Again, I already gushed over special, but special is just amazing. And I just think one, and of course we can't forget Naked. We can't forget the icon that is Little Miss Naked. I think Naked is just so cinematic. I'm such a cinematic pop song ho. Like if something even sounds slightly cinematic, I'm like, Hello? <laughs> so for me, Naked was just that, and I absolutely adored it so much. It was just truly an iconic song. I don't know what else you want me to say. So right, nothing, because you know I'm right. <laughs> I just feel so sexy listening to it. It gives me major, because I love you. And now's actually the first song that got me into Lizzo. I wish there was more play in this album. Like maybe that was my thing. Especially because her previous album, she wasn't really sticking to one genre. And in this album, she stuck to one thousand and one sound only and it didn't really experiment even within that sound because you can have 80s pop and it will not sound the same like again taylor did it carly did it victoria kind of did it with the 70s sound so like that's what i feel like personally you can totally do it i forgot how gorgeous this blush is okay let's go on to the rating of lizzo's album i'm gonna rate it a 7 out of 10 will i listen to it hell yeah i do really really like it and i do think it's fun and i do think it's energetic and i do think if you need to pick me up it's really really good but i wish there was more experimentation and i wish she kind of experimented more with the mid-tempo songs also my top three is um naked everybody's gay and to be loved but especially in the mix and the bottom three we already discussed so yeah and last but certainly not least because the internet is loving it and i'm part of the internet we are talking about sabrina carpenter's Emails I can't send. Now this girl was not expecting it to be this good. Like of course, if you know, I'm a big Sabrina Carpenter fan. If you can see in the corner, there's Singular Act One, and I love Singular Act One. That's again the album that made me fall in love with Sabrina. But this fucking album did everything. Oh my god, it was so good, so good. To be honest, with this album, I was actually kind of nervous for it, and that's because we had Skinny Dipping and Vicious. Like Skinny Dipping took me a while to get into it, and kind of same with Vicious. I'm not totally in love with the vicious completely, but there was fast times and fast times is forever that girl I simply just love fast times. I still do love fast times. Fast times is just everything to me So when the album came and I started listening, I just fell in love It's so different for her because we don't think we've had an album that a tells a story I just adore. I'm a big storytelling fan And I think that's what makes this album so fulfilled and full and that's why I really really like it I've listened to this album probably three times and this is the album with the most listened to songs off it Outside of the album, I wanted to listen to the songs like over and over and over again I'm literally falling in love with every song about 500 different times Like my initial first faves were like read your mind because I liked a boy which we'll get onto that and um, Fast times, but now it's now so different again. This album is just so good I just think she did storytelling so well. She told kind of everything her 
her feelings, her emotions, but it's still good. I still want to bop to it. Ah, oh, there's some songs which just put you in the right mood. And honestly, I just love it so much. Now, of course, we kind of have to talk to R B because I like the boy. Such a good song. But also, this is finally how I talk about the whole Joshua, Sabrina, Olivia drama. And honestly, though, like, she kind of got hit the most with it. She kind of faced the most consequences and she was right because she liked the boy. That's all she really did. She liked someone. Everyone was slut shaming her. Everyone was really against her and can you imagine how detrimental that was to someone's mental health? That's just so bad and I feel like everyone else kind of has that like, oh like we forgive them now. Like Joshua definitely has. Olivia and like people like we still love you. So I'm hoping with everyone liking this album that Sabrina gets the same because honestly my girl deserves it heavily to me. Also just sonically and like production wise, yes. And the music video, the circus theme with like the glamour and like, oh, she looks so good. Oh my God. I think with this era the most compared to the other two, just because with Mabel's I didn't really know about the music videos as much. And with Lizzo's she's only released one. Sabrina's music videos for this era have been ace. Skinny Dipping, which is actually a really cool music video. I really, really, really like it. I like the stitching and this collage kind of effect. I thought it was really cool. And I love how it then transitions into the next single. Like that, I thought that was so clever. Cause then it made you excited for the next single, which was Fast Times. It wasn't what I was expecting. Like personally for me, I thought Fast Times was more like a city, kind of like gonna ride our bikes and explore the city versus like a spy movie thing. But she looked so good. They're all just so good good and there's such good storytelling music videos also which connects back to the album because that's a story within itself so for every kind of music video having its own individual story it just makes sense to me and I really really love that and that's such a clever move to do as an artist to me I really really love that I think it's just so cool but you want her so sexy oh my god there's something about that feels super seductive and I was listening to it on the train and I was just like I feel like that bitch read your mind though is that bitch though read your mind but honestly, I just love Read Your Mind. That was initially the first song that I kind of fell in love with. And it's still my favorite from the album. It's so fun and energetic. As you can tell, I really like fun pop. But also, the song next to it, Tornado Warnings, I also really, really love. Tornado Warnings is that really calming song for me. And it's also really catchy. And I just think it's such like a beautiful song. That's the thing is, the more I listen to this album, the more and more songs I'm just falling in love with. Even songs that like, I just didn't think, oh, they're gonna like grow on me and then they end up do. Like, I think I bet you wanna. Is you wanna know songs too? Oh, I just think she's done so good. And I really don't have much criticism to say. I really like it. Just say album of the year, but like, we still have so many other albums to listen to. Like, we've got Arena's coming out and we got Beyonce as well. And those two are so highly anticipated. So, top three from Sabrina. Obviously, it's Read Your Mind, Tornado Warnings, 1000%. And at the moment, although this would definitely change my mind. It's between Fast Times and Bet You Wanna. But we don't know. We could be going in a different direction. And bottom three. Now, with the bottom three for this one, it's not that these are bad songs. Oh my god, no. I still will listen to them. I still like them. Then it's like the ones I wouldn't gravitate towards the most. So my bottom three are How Many Things, Bad For Business, and Vicious. However, I will also say I love Decode. Decode makes me really sad though. Like I wanna cry listening to Decode. There's like a sense of like empowerment and like being strong within yourself. Cause it's like, yes, I'm over you now. I don't have to deal with all this work. Especially cause it feels unnecessary. So like, that's great. But the laughing at the end and like, oh my God. It's like, oh, we're gonna keep this for the future. It just makes me want to cry. Mm. And emails I can't send out. I remember listening to like the title track and I was like, Dab. But honestly, it's such an amazing album. I would definitely recommend everyone to listen to it. This is the final look, the final album. So what do we think? Anytime I do a blue lid, I always go for bronzy skin. I'm kind of living for this. I really did hope you enjoyed this video. And I will actually see you in next week's video. And I'm hoping I'm gonna see you for Beyonce's album commentary. Bye.